In the 43 years I've been doing microwaves, most of it's been done from portable locations such as this one, high on the Peak District Moors, using a large dish, homemade transceivers and 2 meter antennas for talkback. This equipment's quite heavy and takes uh, quite a bit of setting up, uh, so it's much nicer to be able to operate from home. But until November last year, 2012, I couldn't really do that because the location was so poor, uh, down a steep hill in Sheffield, hemmed in on almost all sides, that I couldn't really work very far, apart from some rather abnormal conditions when I worked into Europe a few times. The video footage you're going to see shows what I did on the 28th of July, 2013 when the UK Microwave Group was holding one of its uh, regular microwave cumulative contests. This one was for the 5.7 gig, 10 gig and 24 gigs band. So I thought I'd just get out my smaller dish, a 60 centimeter offset, and set it up at the house on the veranda over the garage and just see what I could work uh, from there and hopefully work some long distances and test out this new location with a view to eventually putting up a much more permanent um, setup. The chief for WLC is uh, coming through direct path. He's near Cheltenham. Well, there's no rain scatter on him. This is my portable station used in the living room instead. It's very simple. On the right is an FT817, which is used as the IF, to feed a transfer to uh, standing on a platform, which in turn is mounted on a small tripod as you can see here. This transfer to feeds an old Sky or Amstrad offset dish, 60 centimeters diameter. It's waveguide fed into a feed horn that I designed out of plumbing parts. A small three element Yagi provided the torque back on two meters. Here's a close up of the transverter. It's completely self contained, the two meters goes in here at the cream input uh, connector and as you can see the takeoff from the veranda is quite good this is looking slightly east of south as we come further south the land descends quite a bit and I get a good takeoff here this is due south and now we're looking towards the southwest where I made my longest QSO, which was down into Cornwall. As we look further west, the situation gets a little grim because there are a lot of trees in the way from the veranda location of the equipment, although when it's on the roof I'm sure it'll clear them. The trees are really bad attenuators at microwaves. That's the uh, Manchester Beacon on 10 GHz on 1036810 uh, from Manchester but I'm beaming due south to get that because the signal's getting scattered off a rainstorm cloud, probably a thunderstorm to the south. It, I can hear it directly if I beam west but it's no stronger and still has the rain scatter propagation.
This is uh, the uh, Finningley 10 gig beacon, a G0 Golf Hotel kilowatt stroke beacon, uh, which is uh, to the northeast of me, uh, over rising ground, but I'm beaming south to get a reflection off the rain scatter cloud. Quite a strong signal, and the rough, the rough signal is due to the scatter. The bright band on the waterfall display is a Golf Zero Golf Hotel Kilowatt Beacon from Finningley. Uh, it's a rain scatter signal and is a very broad uh, um, characteristic. Well, this compares to my own signal which is sending dots and uh, quite a strong signal into the sound card so you can see the difference between that and the rain scatter signal GB3 Charlie Charlie X-ray uh, down near Cheltenham. This is a beacon up on the hills, uh, beaming directly to it. There's just a trace of rain scatter on it. As this was just a test day for me and not a serious entry into the contest, I only worked eight stations, but it still uh, proved the site was uh, very viable. So we finish off now with some uh, strong rain scatter signals from Tony, G4CBW, to my west in Cheshire, and Neil, G4 Lima Delta Radio, down near Andover.